In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. My name is Father Wilhard. Sometimes people do call me Father Willie, so you can call me Father Willie as well. That's fine. And uh, I was born at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro, Tanzania, 42 years ago. And uh, I have never climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. But since my childhood, I've been seeing young people from U Europe coming and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. The farthest I have gone is just at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. But sometimes in the morning and in the evening at home, I do, cl I do, climb, I do climb it just by using my eyes. Just like that. Come on. And I belong to the Rosmanian order. And I'm very happy to be in Ireland. The people of Ireland are wonderful. Wonderful smiles. They're welcoming. But one of the things which normally strikes me about Ireland are the proverbs which are being used here. I remember visiting one family and I saw in the kitchen it was written, if you want breakfast, sleep in the kitchen. I don't want to tell you what I did. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the 32nd, 32nd Sunday ordinary time ESC. And in our mass today, we remember and pray for Peter McCaddy, Teresa Madi, three years anniversary, Matthew Finnegan, Desi and Sadie Melon, one year anniversary. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. To prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the blessing of all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book, the second book of the Maccabees. There were seven brothers who were arrested with their mother. The king tried to force them to taste pig's flesh, which the law forbids, by tor torturing them with whips and scourges. One of them, acting as spokesman for the others, said, What are you trying to find out from us? We are prepared to die rather than break the law of our ancestors. With his last breath, the second brother exclaimed, Inhuman fiend, you may discharge us from this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up, since it is for his laws that we die, to live again forever. 
After him, they amused themselves with the third, who on being asked for his tongue, promptly thrust it out and boldly held out his hands with these honorable words. It was heaven that gave me these limbs. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. The king and his attendants were astounded at the young man's courage and his utter indifference to suffering. When this one was dead, they subjected the fort to the same savage torture. When he neared his end, he cried, Ours is the better choice, to meet death at man's hands, yet relying on God's promise that we shall be raised up by him, whereas for you there can be no resurrection, no new life. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. Filled with the, when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry, turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. I kept my feet firmly in your paths. There was no faltering in my steps. I am here and I call, you will hear me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in my justice, I shall see your face and be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory. I shall be filled when I awake with the sight of your glory, O Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has given us his love and through his grace such inexhaustible comfort and such sure hope comfort you and strengthen you in everything good that you do or say. Finally, brothers, pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message may spread quickly and be received with honor as it was among you. And pray that we may be preserved from the interference of bigoted and evil people, for the faith is not given to everyone. But the Lord is faithful, and he will give you strength and guard you from the evil one. And we in the Lord have every confidence that you are doing and will go on doing what we, uh, all that we tell you to. May the Lord turn your hearts towards the love of God and the fortitude of Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who say that there's no resurrection, approached Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing that if a man's married brother dies childless, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Well then, there were seven brothers. The first, having married a wife, died childless. The second, and then the third, married the widow. And the same with all seven. They died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, to which of them will she be wife, since she had been married to all seven? Jesus replied, The children of this world take wives and husbands. But those who are judged, judged worthy of a place in the, in the other world and in the resurrection from the dead do not marry because they can no longer die, for they are the same as the angels, and being children of the resurrection, they are sons and daughters of God. And Moses himself implies that the dead rise again in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, 
not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all people are in fact alive. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now getting closer to the end of our liturgical year. As we do so, the readings of this Sunday places our attention on an eschatological perspective. This means that the readings points at the last things, meaning death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Death is a mystery, and the answer to this mystery is Christ himself, who died, rose, and will come again to judge the living and the dead at the last time. If Jesus died and rose from the dead, then death is not the end, but the beginning of new life in Christ. In your professional faith, we believe on the resurrection of the, of the body and the life of the world to come. Therefore, we believe that those who have gone before us are living a new life in Christ, and they are still living among us. We always remember their smiles. We always remember their love for us. We always remember even their jokes. We remember how caring they were, etc., etc. And we try our best to emulate them with the great hope that at the end of, of our life in this world, we will meet them again. Our hope and faith in Christ points clearly that death has no effect to those who have died in Christ. They are with God, and nothing can take them away from his presence. This is because they lived a life of some virtue which embraced the love of God and neighbor. As part of our preparations for our new life in heaven with Christ, the readings of this Sunday reminds us to live our faith through being people of resurrection by transforming our lives into, conf into conformity to the teachings of Jesus. The first reading presents us with a family which kept the law of God. They upheld this law even in the anguish of death. They were convinced that it is better for them to die than to disobey God. They believed that death is not an end. One of them, we heard from the reading, pointed out, ours is the better choice to meet death at men's hands, yet relying on God's promise that we shall be raised up by him. Their hope was not this world, but heaven. Many musicians in the world have composed great music and songs about death. I like Jim Reeves, his song with the title this world is not my home, resembles what this young man in the first reading uttered. I am not sure whether here in Ireland priests sing during the homily. If you don't mind, will you kindly allow me to sing a little bit? May I sing a little bit, please? Okay. This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels become me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels become me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I, <laughs> Earlier this year, on the 19th of January, to be precise, I had a very sad experience. One of our Rosminian novices in Tanzania drowned and died in our lake. It is something that reminds me always to get prepared. This world in which we live is not our permanent home. 
our novice woke up in the morning attending morning prayers and mass with the other students he went for breakfast and then meditation of the sacred scriptures and as he was getting prepared for his lessons he decided to go to the lake and cast the net in order to catch fish for the community unfortunately he got caught up in the net and drowned in the in the lake and his life in this world ended i'm sure in his agony and suffering as he approached death his total dependence was god just like the young people we had in the first reading and just like the message you got from jim reeves song the courage of the seven brothers in the first reading shows us that their faith was everything for them their faith meant their life if you contemplate on these brothers we may realize how faithful god how faithful to god they were they remind us to keep on try, trying to live our faith every day even if sometimes it may cost our time and even our lives they remind us also of many christians who are being persecuted because of their faith in different parts of our world we are called to pray for them and to use the peaceful atmosphere we enjoy to pray and practice what pleases god and our neighbor they remind us to focus our attention on life after death and not just on the passing fame and prosperity which the world offers as jesus tells us god is the god of the living he is the god of abraham isaac and jacob this means that there is life after death hence if our god is the god of the living then we must ensure that we live a trustworthy life by being prayerful caring of self and others by unconditional love and unconditional positive regard as part of our preparation for his heavenly kingdom may the lord who is always faithful for us beyond our death grant us strength and confidence that we may always accept his will in our lives and never lose sight of our ultimate destination this is to live with him in heaven forever amen kindly let us now stand up and let us uh, let us uh, say our creed i believe in one god the mighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified and upon his pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. inspired by today's gospel we confidently come with our prayers as sons and daughters to a merciful and welcoming father in today's gospel jesus confirms that although the body may die we ourselves are children of the resurrection who become as angels sons and daughters of, god, of our god we pray that we never lose sight of our ultimate destination and the promise of eternal life in the glorious presence of the father who loves us with an everlasting love lord hear us in this month of november we remember our dead in a very special way 
Let us today celebrate the lives of our beloved ones and members of our community who have departed this life and pray that they may enjoy the blessings of God's compassion and love eternally. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have recently lost loved ones and are in mourning. We pray that they may find real hope and consolation in Christ's promise of everlasting life and in that the spirit of their loved one is ever present in their lives. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick and unwell, particularly those with cancer and for those currently undergoing treatment. We pray for their recovery and that in their darkest moments, the care of friends and neighbors may bring them hope and peace. Lord, hear us. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. And we also remember and pray for Peter Makal, Teresa Madi, Matthew Finnegan, Desi and Sedi Malone, and Gertrude Finnegan. We ask the Lord to receive them in his heavenly, heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Let us ask our mother, Mother Mary, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and there of our death. Amen. Father, we make these prayers to you, reaching out in confidence, knowing the love and compassion you have for all your children. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us a cup of joy. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself 
that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, when I got up full of your glory, the Son in the highest, this is the comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Amon and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Peter, Macal, Teresa, Madi, Matthew, Finnegan, Desi, Sadi Malone, and Gertrude Finnegan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our most chair spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of God, glory and yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us now share with each other that gift of peace. Peace be. Peace be. Lamb of God, this is God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful, restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Before the blessing, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone uh, present here, and I would like to thank the sacristan, and I would also like to express my thanksgiving to our author servers. It was wonderful, and uh, because I'm new here, they were able to lead me to this part, so um, I'm really very happy. And I would like to thank each one of you for the way you are supporting our mission, our Rosminian mission in Tanzania in terms of education for the people, in terms of uh, health services, and also uh, uh, water for the people. On behalf of all the Rosmanians, uh, I would like to say thank you very much. And I would like to say this in your language. Gor mile my hogat. And uh, in Tanzania, we have a language called Swahili. And in Kiswahili, we say, Asante sana. Will you please say Asante sana? Bravo. Very good. Very good. Okay, now the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you.